All right, David Harry here. Now, have you ever wondered if there is a difference between the free version of DaVinci Resolve and the paid version of DaVinci Resolve, which is Resolve Studio, when it comes to the export times that both of them do with the exact same media and the exact same timeline? Well, if you've been wondering that, the answer is no. So in this instance, this video is going to have been a very short video for you. However, for anybody who is interested in the tests that I've done in order to find this out, then carry on watching the video. Now, there are just a couple of things that I would like to mention here. I'm using an M1 Mac Mini. This is a 16 gigabyte version with a 256 gigabyte storage option in it. I'm also using an external Thunderbolt drive. I will get to that during the testing and explain why I'm also using the external drive. Now, to be clear, this particular test has got nothing to do with video quality or file size. This is strictly just a speed test. And don't forget, if you like the video as it's playing through, a thumbs up would be great and a sub to the channel would be absolutely awesome. But first, a word from this video's sponsor, who is routermods.co.uk. At routermods.co.uk, you will find a wide selection of all the latest wireless internet routers. These range from off-the-shelf routers by all the major brands through to professionally pre-modified routers. You can also send your router to router mods and have them professionally modify it for you. And they also have a comprehensive selection of antennas. So head over to routermods.co.uk for all your wireless internet needs. Okay, so the first export that I'm going to do is with the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Now, before I do the export, I am just going to explain a few things here to do with the project settings, the media and the drive allocation and stuff like that and the reason why is because it will allow us to understand a little bit more clearly as to exactly what is going on so the first thing that I'm going to point out here is the version of Resolve that I'm using, which is 18.5B Build 31. So basically, this is the most up-to-date version of the public beta of the free version of Resolve as of doing this video. Now, what I'm going to do here is just to come down to the project settings and let's see what's going on here. As we can see, this is 4K UHD. I will just call this 4K from here on in. We know it is UHD. And I am at a frame rate of 60 frames per second. Now, in the timeline here, I've got a piece of media, which is exactly one minute long. And this media is also 4K 60. So essentially what we're doing here is matching the media to the project settings as far as resolution and frame rate are concerned and on the point of the media as well if we have a look up here at the inspector we can see that the media is apple prores 422 hq once again it is at 60 frames per second and obviously 4k uhd now something really important here about where the media is located so if i just come to the desktop this is the file here that I have got in the timeline. So what we're doing here is using the Max internal hard drive or internal SSD to store the media that I'm about to encode. And then the encode will go to this drive here, which is an external four terabyte Thunderbolt drive. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because this will definitely rule out any possibilities of bottlenecking as far as the drives are concerned, as in where we read the file from and where we write it back to. In this instance, two completely different drives. And also this external four terabyte Thunderbolt drive is actually a faster drive than the one that's inside the Mac itself anyways. So absolutely no possibilities of bottlenecking going on to do with the drives and the storage. Also, for anybody who's interested, there will be a video link at the end of this video and in the video description below and possibly on the screen right now explaining about this particular drive here because it's actually a really cool drive for doing this type of stuff with. Anyways, back to Resolve. So what I'm going to do now is go to the exporter. 
Now, as far as the exporting is concerned, I'm just going to run through quickly here what's going on. And then as we will see, when I get to the studio version of the export, everything will be exactly the same. So as far as file name is concerned, I'm calling this Resolve 3 because this is the version that's on the free version of Resolve. And then the location here is that external 4 terabyte Thunderbolt drive that I've just shown you. Now, as far as the video is concerned, I'm using the QuickTime wrapper and using H.265 as the video codec. Now, as far as the audio codec is concerned, this is AAC. However, like I've already said, this is not a quality test, but I'm just showing the setup here so that we know that it is matched exactly the same when I do the same thing with the studio version. Now, as far as resolution and frame rate are concerned, they are both set to the exact same standard as what the media and the timeline is, which is 4K UHD and 60 frames per second. Now, I've got the quality on auto automatic here and the reason why is because this is not like I've said from the outset any kind of test to do with picture quality or file size and just to be clear about that these settings here to do with the bit rate will not impact in any way on the actual time that it takes to do the exports so whether that's a low bit rate or a super high bit rate doesn't matter the export time is still exactly the same anyways coming down here I'm using main 10 it is absolutely unnecessary to use a 10-bit codec for standard dynamic range uploads to YouTube however I always use like you know 10-bit all the time for my editing and also for the storing of my outputs and whatnot in case I need to re-edit them again and then I've also got here multi-pass encode switched on now this will actually make the encode longer but I think the longer the encode the more difference we will see in time if there is going to be any difference within the time Anyway, so what I'm going to do here is just add that to the queue and then I will hit render. Okay, now this will take a little bit of time. So what I'm not going to do is like go all the way through this in real time. However, as we will see from up here, we get a rough idea of the amount of frames being encoded at any one time per second. And at the moment, that's going to fluctuate between 51, 51.5, 52 thereabouts. Anyways, let me speed this up until I get to the second pass. Okay, so this is now on to the second pass. And just to be clear, with a two-pass encode, the first pass is like the analysis pass, and then the second pass is actually the encode pass. And as we can see here, this is also going to be around 51, 51.5, and 52 frames per second. So essentially, the first pass, the analysis pass, is essentially exactly the same speed as what the second pass is, which is the actual encode pass. Anyways, let me speed up through this until I get to the end, and let's see how long this takes. Okay, so I'm going to come back in here so I'm ready for when it finishes. So we're nearly finished, and let's see. Hold on. Nearly there and boom there we go okay so two minutes and 21 seconds so what i'm now going to do is do the exact same thing but with resolve studio okay so i am now over onto resolve studio and i will very quickly just go over everything again so that we know that everything is like for like so first off then the version of resolve as we can see here this is studio and this is version 18.5b build 31 as far as the project is concerned all the same 4k uhd 60 frames per second it's the same media in the timeline as we can definitely tell here from the inspector now if i then go to the exporter i've called this one resolve studio it is going to that four terabyte thunderbolt drive and as far as audio is concerned it's aac we're on quick time for the wrapper h.265 for the codec there for the video uh, 4k uhd 60 as far as the resolution and frame rate for the export are concerned once again quality is on automatic for the bit rate i have got main 10 selected and i am on multi-pass encode now let me just add that to the queue and i will just click on render all and immediately we're going to see Let's see. Yeah, that looks like it is exactly the same. Now, I'm just going to speed through this. I will speed through the first pass and also the second pass in one go. And we'll get to that end number for the encode time. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna come in here now and let's see what it does for this final encode time here. And let's see, it's done and it is two minutes and 21 seconds, which is the exact same time that it took to do using the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so just a couple of things here to round up the video with. Now I'm quite sure that there's probably some people out there thinking to themselves, come on Dave, surely you didn't think there was going to be a difference between the free version and the paid version? Well, the simple answer to that question is, I didn't know until I did the test. Now, to be honest, I was actually in the back of my head thinking that there may have been a slight difference, and that's only because there are other functions in studio that we don't get in the free version, and I was just wondering if maybe the encoder was impacted within these differences. Obviously, it isn't, which is absolutely fantastic news for anybody who's on the free version. Now, one place where I do expect that most people would expect a difference would be between different types of Macs. So for that I will be doing a similar test but this one will be just using studio and I'm going to use it on the M1 against an M1 Max. Now in that instance obviously there is definitely going to be a difference however what is that difference going to be like? So if you're into that type of stuff keep an eye on the channel because there will be that video coming up shortly and also if you check out my Resolve or my Mac playlists and stuff there will be similar videos in there as well. Anyways that will definitely do it for this video and if you found it useful or interesting in any way please do give it a thumbs up a sub to the channel would be absolutely amazing i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now